Welcome back to another segment of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons. Today I'm going to be talking about the episode, The Triangle, where all sorts of triangles and love relationships are happening and people are winning and losing and competing for love. If you're enjoying these, please do hit like and subscribe. This episode revolves around the relationship, the blooming beginning of the relationship between Reverend Fordwick and Rosemary Hunter. And caught in that triangle is John Boy, who it seems has a bit of a crush on Miss Hunter and also feels very possessive of her because she's been so important in his life, in his writing and in helping to guide him. At this point, he is working on an essay for a contest and Miss Hunter has been helping him finesse the essay so that it can be in its best possible form to enter this competition. Then here's a moment where John Ritter, as Reverend Fordwick, enters and uh, shares a scene with Miss Hunter, played by the fabulous Mary Claire Costello. And I love this sense of awkwardness that I think we often can feel in a new relationship. How do you go forward? Do you say something? You're so vulnerable. Uh, and it's just a lovely moment between these two brilliant actors. Another struggling romance is of Ben's. Ben has a crush on Naomi, who uh, is teasing him and pitting him against Willie, who's a much bigger boy and is threatening to knock Ben's head off if he, you know, if he causes any sort of trouble. And Ben feeling uh, that size difference and feeling like he's he's can't compete physically, uh, backs down, but he has a plan. Now, John Boy tries to give him advice, saying that he should perhaps move on to one of the other girls in class, but Ben's like, nope, I've got a plan. As Jim Bob and Elizabeth are teasing about Ben being in love, Olivia uh, and John share a cute little exchange where John thinks uh, Ben's too young, and Olivia says, well, it, when you were Ben's age, you were you were basically making a play for me. And John was like, no, I just grabbed you and kissed you. So an interesting piece of history about the relationship of John and Olivia. John Boy's essay is supposed to be about uh, the most interesting or extraordinary or most important person in his life. He's writing about Miss Hunter, although he has not told her that. He says it's about an aunt of his, uh, but he speaks about this woman being ordinary, but extraordinary in an ordinary way, uh, which was very interesting to me because the character of Miss Hunter, yes, was very gentle and kind and, and not big and flashy and flamboyant as a character, uh, but that can be some of the hardest work to do as an actress, to stand out and command the screen with this sort of a gentle character. And I always felt that Mary Claire Castello did that so well. And she was absolutely mesmerizing and stunning on camera. Reverend Fordwick finally gets up the courage to ask Miss Hunter if he can court her. Uh, she is pleasantly stunned by this request and becomes quite girlish. She's distracted, which is annoying to John Boy, and John Boy is becoming very jealous of this attention that is no longer his and is now focused on the Reverend uh, and resents him. Uh, and, but Miss Hunter has these lovely moments where she goes to Olivia's to ask for help with a dress that it, it be fitted better because she wants to look pretty. She confesses that uh, Matthew has uh, shown an interest in her and she's curious about whether she can do something different with her hair that she never really thought much about trying to look pretty, but now she would like to look her best. And I felt that that was a just a lovely, sweet moment, like sharing girl talk between Olivia and Rosemary. Ben's answer to winning the girl turns out that he has purchased this magazine that tells him how to turn from a 97 pound weakling into the strongest man. and. Uh, and here you see these pictures and this magazine, and this is what he's going to do, all these resistance type uh, 
exercises to build up his muscles so he's strong enough to take on Willie if Willie decides to pick on him. So throughout the episode, he is he, with John Boy, with Jason, he's working on building his muscles and also knowing that the upcoming church picnic, there is going to be a uh, nail, uh, nail driving competition and he's going to build up his strength so that he can win this and win the girl. Aaron, in typical tattletale busybody mode, can't stand that she doesn't know what Ben is up to and at one point climbs out of one of the upper story windows and goes across the roof because she's going to peek in John Boy's room to see what Ben is up to. Uh, but she slips and then she's squealing and screaming for somebody to come rescue her. So she's kind of gotten herself in a pickle there. But I, I felt for Mary having to be up on the roof, you know, crawling around uh, because I never liked doing that. Mama uh, basically tells John Boy that uh, Reverend Fordwick is courting Miss Hunter and John Boy uh, reacts to this and and she also tells John Boy that he should let Miss Hunter know that the essay is about her uh, and John Boy isn't at all sure he's happy about that and being as upset as he is by how he feels he's being overlooked by Miss Hunter in favor of the Reverend starts feeling that differently about her and feels that his essay now he doesn't care about, it, he doesn't want to submit it, and it's not the person he knew, and he writes very harshly about her. Uh, and understanding what's going on for John Boy, Grandma and Mama and John all sort of conspire to send John Boy over to Miss Hunter's with gifts that they want to give her to thank her for all the help she's given John Boy, but he's finally trapped into having to go over there. When he's there, Reverend Fordwick is there and he is put in a really awkward position because uh, Miss Hunter wants to look at the essay and then the Reverend sort of starts goading John Boy, which is very interesting. And he becomes a little petty also. Both John Boy and the Reverend display some rather petty uh, characteristics there, which I didn't usually see from either one of them. In this case, the Reverend starts saying that maybe John Boy should write something for the church service, but of course he would have to approve it and he'd have to write on different topics and something with more depth that was appropriate for the church. John Boy is really feeling like his buttons are getting pushed and even Rosemary feels that this is a little awkward and she wants to try and protect John Boy, but then says that the Reverend should hear how beautiful John Boy's words are. And so she pushes him into reading some of this essay and John Boy is so incredibly uncomfortable that he finally sort of tells her that it was about, it's about her and that when he tried to tell her, she was too busy and too distracted to notice, but that he doesn't feel this way about it anymore. And so the, all of what has happened and the damage that's been done and the hurt uh, all comes to the surface there. You've heard lots of songs about lazy days, but mine's the laziest of all. We live on a farm way down in Louisiana. All day we sit around and watch the wall. Along the way in this episode, I found a lot of really sweet family moments. At one point, we we're all pulling taffy. <laughs> At another point, uh, it's just a typical kitchen scene, but I noticed that that door to what we have all determined was a pantry that was rarely open in the kitchen is visible and open and has a wall in there that we can see and is lit. That wall that we can see back through there was not typically there, so they would have put that in just for this scene. We are all preparing for a church picnic. And so another great example of one of those community events that the Waltons were always engaged upon, which just added so much sense of the community and the fun and the charm of the time when we actually are all at the church picnic. Uh, we're frolicking in the water again. The boys are jumping off a raft and I am rowing Aaron and Elizabeth in the water and then grandpa's telling tall tales and Everybody's participating in food and, and games and a sack race. And so just a lot of underlying background against which all of these 
these angst-ridden love stories are placed. When it comes time for Ben to display his newfound strength in the nail driving contest, he's up against Willie and he loses. So although he loses and he walks off, Naomi comes and tells him how much she loves red hair. And so the two of them walk off. And I love this little moment where Ben starts to put his arm around her and then he feels embarrassed and he just takes her hand instead. So for the moment, he has won the girl. Then John Boy does decide to attend. And he, um, after John has basically flat out accused him of being jealous, and when John Boy said he wasn't going to attend and how he's been behaving. And so when John Boy attends and the Reverend is about to participate in the spike driving contest, John Boy says he wants to take him on. And the two of them pound stakes. The Reverend wins this. John Boy's handle literally breaks on his, on his hammer, on his sledgehammer. He shakes his hand and walks off. But... Then he has a lovely scene where he confesses to Miss Hunter that he was jealous. And she apologizes for her part in that and says that she will always care about John Buena's writing and wanting him to be the best that he can be and be there for him. So the two have a lovely reconciliation scene that was set against these beautiful flowers, this bush where you see the flowers in the background in these close-ups. And then as they both walk off, the camera pushes in on these flowers, which were an analogy for how John Boy had described the character of Miss Hunter in his essay. As it turns out, pretty much everyone won in some way in the episode. So another happy ending for the Waltons all around. That's what I have for you for this segment of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons. I'll be back with more Behind the Scenes of the Waltons and more Ask Judy. Thanks for watching.